introductions. And this is the rule. Just four things. By name, it's also name or username, whatever you're comfortable sharing. I don't want anyone to give more information than they're comfortable giving away. How, m how much experience you have, you have in Flight Simulator? How long have you been doing it for? Um, the, and uh, sort of how much have you been doing it? Any real world flying experience, if you have any. And then the one thing, if there's just one thing you can take away from today, what it is. So what I'll do is I'll start and then I'll call people out individually. So, hi, my name's Tarek. Uh, my username's Maryface on gaming channels. You can call me Mary, a lot of people do. And I have been doing Flight Simulator since uh, Flight Sim 2002, so it's been a fair few years. Um, I'm, I'm about a teenage full amount of time. And uh, in terms of real flight experience, I was a flight instructor. I was an airline pilot and a survey pilot. I've been flying since 2007, uh, and I've taken a hiatus since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, Dying to get back into it. Lovely, lovely profession, but that's for another the story for another day. Uh, and the one thing I want you to get from today is feedback. As always with these free seminars, I am trying to improve them for the next one so that it's better. Um, and of course, these seminars, you know, we can talk about why I'm doing these at the end of the session, but I do want them to be of the highest quality possible. So if there's something you don't like about it, something you think I could improve upon. At the end of the session, I'd love it if you could share that with me. So with that being done, I'm going to pick on the person I know the best here. So Null, could you please fire away and uh, present and introduce yourself? Ahoy there, everyone. Uh, I'm Null. Uh, I've, I'm just about to crack 200 flight hours in MSFS, which is basically my only real flight sim simulator experience, unless you count me as like a six-year-old playing with like Microsoft 95 and not understanding anything. Uh, I have very little to none real-world flight experience, despite being on like planes for commercial travel. But that's going to change soon, uh, basically because of ANC. And uh, uh, one thing I want to take away from today's session: I want to learn more about teardrops. Uh, that's what I'm into. Thank you, Noah. That's awesome. Yeah, and you will learn a lot about teardrops today, so that's good. Sick. Cool. So then I'm going with the first I know the, uh, the best second, not to put the pressure on anyone else. Uh, G, if you've got your um, your audio working and your messages on Facebook, tell me that you have. Could you please introduce yourself to the group if your if your microphone works? Um, I don't know if you're speaking or not, G. I can't hear you at the moment. Okay, I'm going to assume you have issues with your mic, G. So what I'd ask you to do. Go ahead into your settings, see if you can fix your mic. And in the meantime, Alvin, could you please introduce yourself? And then G will come back to you in a second. Sure, my, my name is Al, Alvin Gregg. Um, flight seminar leader experience. Um, learning about it, I'm, I'm a beginner. I'm not real new, but just learning about the ins and outs. Real world flight experience. I'm a private pilot, have my pilot license for quite a few years, single engine land. And one thing we'll get out of today's session, just learn what it's about. Perfect. Thank you, Alvin. That that was fantastic. And that's really cool that you have your private pilot's license, um, especially since it, uh, from from your accent, I'm going to take it that you're from somewhere in the US, uh, which is really exciting because I haven't had a chance to do one of these sessions with someone who has a license yet from the United States. So I'm really excited about that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, G, how's your her, your mic? I'll give you a second to respond. He says he says he's okay. So I got messages from G on Facebook. He says he'll come back to us. So we'll we'll come around on G and just get uh, continue with the session. All right. So what is a hold? So I'm, I'm I'm jumping straight into it. But what is a hold before we even look at this slide? Um, can anyone just throw some something they know about holds it's a mechanism to get into a good uh, stable landing and approach okay yeah that we could absolutely use use that definition any any other um ideas as to what uh, the purpose of a hold is okay so so they actually the, the purpose of a hold is literally that you hold you stand by to wait um, 
and a lot of holds are integrated into IFR approaches. So, um, if an airport's really busy, if it's over capacity, then an aircraft might be put in a hold, right? Or for example, there's an emergency and you're flying IFR, you may, you may be asked to hold. Why would you hold? Well, you might be an IMC and you can't just visually stay clear of other traffic and terrain, in which case you have predetermined uh, fixes and sometimes predetermined holds in themselves where you would enter and fly in a circuit, like a sort of like a, a race circuit pattern, as you can see here on the screen. And so typically this race, this uh, uh, race circuit pattern will ensure that you're clear of the approach or of the of terrain and essentially keeping you safe until it's ATC has the time and the available the available services to then allow you to continue with the approach. And so when it comes to entering a hold, you might be vectored or you might be following a star or an approach and you might be asked to be put in a hold and they might give you a direct entry or they might give you as it as part of a procedure. So for example, I've been told to complete a star in the past in an Airbus and then to hold at a specific point in that star, which point we would just program the hold in the, in the flight computer and let the airplane fly it and then automatically enter the hold. Now that's great, but we're doing general aviation today. So unfortunately, we don't have that luxury in most cases. And even when you do, we're going to practice it manually, more or less, for fun. So the way you enter a hold depends on the direction you're coming from. So this is exactly what this image represents. And in these, you have the three sectors, the biggest of which is 180 degrees. It's called the direct entry. The second biggest is this one. That's called the parallel entry. And then the smallest one is what we in, the, in Europe, we call the offset entry, or in the US, the teardrop entry. So if you're coming from this sector, you do a, a direct entry. If you come from anywhere in this sector, coming from this direction onto the fix, you do a parallel entry. And if you do anything from, if you're anywhere in this sector going to the hold, you do an offset or a teardrop entry. And so we will look now at what these entries are. And then as we go through these slides, we're going to look at how to determine which one it is and how to, and how to uh, actually enter them. Um, so just checking, G, are you okay for with your microphone? Uh, can you hear me now? We can hear you now, mate. Oh, finally, sorry. The thing is, like, I, I recently bought this computer, and I still am tinkering with Windows 11. I'm really new to it, so I, I don't know the ins and outs as of now. No worries, <laughs> mate. Please excuse me. <laughs> so um, good evening, everyone. My name is Gio. I actually just uh, played with words on my name there. Um, I'm from the Philippines, I'm currently living in France. Uh, flight sim experience. I had been uh, using Flight Sim Flight Simulator X since 2016, so uh, around six years now. Uh, real life experience. Well, I recently started getting invited on a uh, full flight simulator by my friend who works in Air France, and there was one instance where I landed an A350 in Orly Airport, and I also did some manual flying on an A320. Uh, one thing to take away from today is everything. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks, Gio. And that's yeah, really sorry for the delay. <laughs> and no, no, no worries. And that's amazing that you get the chance to fly a, a full flight sim because those are uh, yeah. amazing. They yeah, oh, they yes, cost super. And and getting free time on it is great because they usually cost about five hundred to to a thousand dollars an hour. Oh yes, it's a really a big blessing for me. <laughs> no worries. Thank you, yeah, Gio. Nice so to meet everyone. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. So that's great. So now we've got everybody introduced. So apologies for that, for that, um, for the way that worked out. But I'm glad that we got Gio's uh, microphone working. Yeah. Thank you, Windows 11. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about determining the hold entries, and then we'll determine, and then we'll look at how to actually perform them. Or sorry, should I say we're going to look at the shape of the ter the um, the hold entries and how to determine. So first of all. Non-standard holds will be a left-hand uh, hold, and a standard hold will be a right turn. It's just in the legislation, that's what it is. And so when we're looking at holds, we think about standard, non-standard, and that affects how we enter the hold, as we'll see in a bit. 
A, a direct entry hold is exactly that. It's the best one you can get. You just fly over the waypoint, and then you turn onto the outbound leg, and congratulations, you're in the hold. It's as simple as that. And so this 180 sector is the best sector to enter a hold in. Next, we have the parallel entry. Now, it's called the parallel entry because you're going to fly parallel to the outbound leg. So here, for example, I'm coming towards the fix, and then overhead the fix, I fly to the outbound track, as you can see here, fly along the outbound track, I then fly into the hold. So in the non-standard, there'll be a right turn. So if it's a left turn hold, we're gonna enter in a right turn, and if it's a right turn hold, then we're gonna make a left turn, and we're gonna create this 180-ish turn, a little bit more than that, and then fly directly towards the fix. And then we continue our turn and we enter the hold. So that is the parallel entry where we fly overhead the fix and then we fly parallel to the outbound leg. All right. Now, the teardrop or the offset. So this hold is essentially where you fly almost like the parallel, except you're going to offset the outbound leg by 30 degrees, which is why here we call it the offset. In the US, you call it the teardrop because it looks like a drop of tear. It's a teardrop. It's sad. And it's also sad because it's the hardest one because you've got to do math, right? Um, but essentially, you fly overhead the beacon. You look at what the outbound is. If it's a non-standard, you're going to have to turn to the right from that outbound. So 30 degrees plus. If it's a standard hold, it's going to be 30 degrees minus, right? So, for example, if this here were a heading of approximately 045, then that hold is going to be, that hold, that, sorry, that uh, offset entry is going to be on a track of 015, 30 degrees. And here, if we're looking at about 330, then we're going to have to turn it 30 degrees plus. So you're looking at about north, which obviously this doesn't reflect. So this is probably closer to about 320. Okay, so now we know what the different holds are and how they look like. But actually, the main thing we need to do is figure out how to determine which holds we need to use. Because it's great to look at this and say, okay, yeah, fly parallel and turn it. But in the aircraft, what you're looking at is something that looks a little like this, right? So this is what you're seeing. So it can be challenging to figure out from this where to go. So what are we going to do? Here's your horizontal situation indicator, your H HSI. Is anybody not familiar with the HSI? A little familiar, but not so much. Okay. So the, the HSI, the horizontal situational indicator, is essentially the same as the direction indicator. It's just a little bit fancier because it gives you additional bits of information. And in the G1000, it's even better. It gives you the, your ground track and it gives you the CDI and a bunch of other things. But here's what we're going to do. ATC just gave us instructions to proceed directly to the fix and hold. I want you to imagine. First of all, I'm going to take this air. I'm going to take this airplane, move it to the bottom, v mentally in my head, to the bottom of the HSI. This is the CDI, which is what we use to set the nav inbound. Everybody here who's used a VOR is familiar with that concept. We're going to turn that inbound tr uh, course for the inbound leg for the hold. So mentally, you've got this. So physically turn the CDI. So this should be appearing on your on your HSI. Now that is wildly off. I apologize for that. But then mentally, you've moved this airplane to the bottom of the HSI, and the center is now the fix. And this is what you're flying. So then the final step is we mentally draw the hold. So in this case, a standard hold, right turn hold. So from here, it becomes a lot easier to determine which hold we want. Um, no, would you like to fathom, like, guess or 
try and determine which hold entry it is based on this? Uh, I think it, it's not the 181. I mean, this. It's okay this to be wrong. Drop? It is the teardrop, absolutely. Yes. Mm. So let's mentally mentally draw out those pictures. Remember the the picture that we had. We had the um, the twenty degree offset, and then we had this whole area here being the direct, and then we had this area here being the parallel, and then here it would be the sorry that would be the direct, the parallel, and then the teardrop, the the offset teardrop, whatever you want to call it. So let's draw those lines. Those are the lines we draw. Remember, 20 degrees off. And whether to offset that line to the left or to the right, it's super easy. Right turn, offset right. Left turn, offset left. Right? So for a standard, we're going to offset it to the right so that the direct, the parallel entry sector is bigger than the teardrop sector. So here, as you can see, this is definitely a teardrop the offset entry. Now's a chance to ask any questions. If you have a question, but you don't want to interrupt the flow, you can use the Q&A section of the, of, of the meet. So if you go at the bottom, you'll see, in fact, there is no Q&A. Just ask it, just ask it in the comments and then I can, uh, in the chat, and then I can get to it later on. So there's that 20 degrees. And so now you have the different sectors. Okay, so let's do one for a non-standard hold. Everyone, if you got a piece of paper, please feel free to use a piece of paper. Uh, in fact, if you can, put it in the chat. If the CDI is set correctly for the hold, for a non-standard hold, what hold entry would we do? I'll give you 10, 15, 10, 20 seconds. Think about it. Based on what you see on the HSI, with an instruction to proceed directly to the beacon and do an offset hold, um, a, a, uh, a non-standard hold, what would you do? So answers in the chat if you can. It's okay to get it wrong. You don't learn if you don't make mistakes. Is anybody struggling to use the chat? I should ask that first. No, I don't. I don't have a struggle with it. It's just on the lower right. Okay, so while you write your answers, I will talk through the process first. Aircraft is coming to the bottom. So mentally, my airplane's at the bottom of the HSI. Second, this here now has become the beacon for me. It's a non-standard hold, which means I'm going to be turning to the left. So now I can imagine this hold going this way. Like this. So I can draw the sectors. So Noel, Noel's given an answer. Is Noel, what do you think? Do you think you're right or not? I think I have a 50-50 chance of this being correct. <laughs> okay. I feel pretty confident it's not an offset. I'm, okay. I'm, yeah. Yeah. So so here is the here is the perpendicular line. It's a non-standard hold. So how much are we going to offset that perpendicular line by? To the left or to the right? The 20 degrees offset for that sector separation. Uh, to the left. The yeah. Count like counterclockwise, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be something like this, yeah? Yeah. Cool. So based off of that, I would say you are correct, no. So let's go ahead and go through that. So this is what you should have in your mind. Yeah. So there's the hold. So that looks like a direct entry. 
Let's do another one. Again, a non-standard hold. You're just you're now pointing directly at the bearing at the at the beacon, tracking the beacon. Based off of this, what's the hold that we're gonna be entering? What how are we gonna enter the hold, should I say, for a non standard hold? Let's see if someone else could try and and write the answer in the comments below. Or you can say it out loud if you prefer, that's fine as well. How are we going to enter this hold? So we're going to take the airplane, stick it to the bottom of the screen. The beacon's now here. So it's going to be a non-standard. So I'm going to make a left turn. So left turning hold should look like this. That's great. Let's take the perpendicular. Offset it by 20 degrees, non-standard is a left turn, so we're going to offset it to the left by 20 degrees. So it's like this. So I am now in this sector right here. So what sector is that? Is that the smallest? That, that looks like the smallest of the three sectors. So that would be a parallel. Let's see. That would be a parallel. I got it wrong. Uh, yes, that is a parallel. That would be a parallel hold because of the 20 degrees offset would be like this. Correct. Okay. Any questions on this? Good. So... I, this might feel a little bit mushy in your brain. You might understand the technique, but not really feel confidence in being able to perform it. And that's fine. Practice makes perfect. That's why we're going to do a practice session at the end. All right. So, correcting for wins. First of all, the techniques we're going to show here is going to be for 120 knots of indicated airspeed. There's a reason for this, and it's to do with the maths, and it's to do with something called the standard closing angles. We're not going to go into the math, there's just not enough time. If you want, we can we could cover it another time, but th that's the rule that we're using. So, for the rules that we're using, we must be flying at 120 knots, which is why I'd like you to fly in the sim the Baron 58, or the DA-62, or the DA-42, or like the Bonanza or something. Something that flies at, four, at 120 knots comfortably. So we're going to do two things. For the head and tailwind corrections, for hold entries and maintaining the outbound legs, we're going to apply one second correction per knot per minute. So as you can see, here, this is the wind vectors on the PFD on the G1000, and it's either option option one or three. I always forget on the G1000. We can look at how to set that up. We set it up like this so that we got the crosswind and the headwind components, because then we can easily apply this rule. We're going to make a correction of one second for every knot for every minute in the hold. So in the outbound leg. So if I'm going on outbound leg for, leg for one minute. How much they're correct in terms of seconds for this specific one? This would be the head or tailwind. The answer is right here. Eight, eight seconds. You would so is this so eight seconds would be for the crosswind. What's a head or tailwind? Oh zero. Sorry. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, so it's just zero. So we wouldn't put it make a correction in this case at all. If we had, say, five knots of a headwind, so with the arrow at the bottom and a five at the bottom, we'd add five seconds to that hold because we're experiencing resistance. If that was a tailwind, so an arrow at the top with five seconds with five at the bottom, then we would remove five seconds from the one minute hold. So then that outbound leg becomes fifty five seconds. For the crosswind corrections at 120 knots, for every 
do for every um crosswind, so every knot of crosswind, we do one degree of correction. And irrelevant of the hold length or time, we do this correction for just one minute. So if it's a one minute hold, at the end of the hold we turn and that's fine. If you're doing a one minute 30 hold, then you do this for one minute and then you fly on the outbound track and then you do your turn at the end of the hold, the outbound track. Or if it's a distance one, you time for one minute, then fly the outbound track and so forth. So let's look at an example. This is something you might see on your HSI. We've just turned onto the outbound track. So I've set my heading bug on the tail of the CDI. I then have the track diamond match the tail of the CDI and the heading bug. And you can see here the course is 270. So the the outbound leg is SS266. It should say 086. That's a mistake on my part. Let's fix that now. Zero eight six. So I'm gonna have to correct each of these slides now. <laughs> there it is. So there's a zero eight six. And I've just given you the answers. One degree per knot for one minute. Geo. How long is the outbound leg gonna last? At this rate. Outbound leg with these winds looking at this. Oh man, I'm I'm actually I'm honestly completely lost here. <laughs> That's okay. We can we can look look at it on the sim together. Yeah, so yeah. so looking at here, an outbound leg is typically for one minute. We have a five knot headwind. We do one second per knot, so five seconds. It's a headwind, it's resisting our movement. So the one minute outbound leg becomes one minute and five seconds long. Does that make sense, Gio? So are we just gonna add the, like, the headwind to the minute or? Yeah, so, so one, one knot of a headwind for every second. So every so knot you get is one second. Okay, so for example, the headwind is, let's say, seven. So it's going to become what, a minute and seven seconds? Correct. Absolutely correct. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, but then... and I then it's, overthinking there. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And it's the reverse, right? If, if you got a tailwind, if the tailwind okay. is seven, seven knots, then it's one minute minus seven seconds, 53 so it's seconds. Going to be 53 seconds. Okay. Ex exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. No worries. And that's the same knowledge for the cross, it's the same concept for the crosswind, except for heading correction. One knot per degree. So right now, our heading is 086. Now it's going to be wrong down here, so we can ignore this for now. Our heading is 086. So what should our outbound actual track be? Sorry, not our heading. Yeah, our, what should our outbound heading be based off of this? And what should the track be? Again, the track is wrong. I really need to correct these. Sorry, guys. So uh, these two will be wrong. So based off of this, what will our outbound track be? The one we want for correction. 090 is our current track. We want to correct that by 8 degrees, and we always correct it into wind. Crosswind's from the left, so we correct it to the left. So it's going to be 090 minus 8, so we're looking at 082 on the track. On the, on the track, or a heading of 078, 086 minus 8. So either one's correct. These numbers are wrong, except for the bottom one. I apologize. I will fix these slides for the next for the next uh, group in, in the seminar. These are all wrong, except for the timing. <laughs> so it would be 
zero uh so zero seven eight and zero eight two are the correct numbers. I hope that hasn't confused you too much. When do we correct for the outbound leg? When do we apply this correction? When do we start the timer? And when do we turn onto the new calculated track and heading? The answer is when you are abeam the beacon. So this is where I introduced to you a new, another tool on the G1000. That's the bearing indicator. I will show you in the sim how to put the bearing indicator up. The bearing indicator is a really useful tool. And Geo, this is one of the reasons why the G1000, the default G1000 and P3D is inadequate for this exercise because it does not have this tool. Ooh, okay. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. I'm just explaining why it's inadequate okay, for okay. today. I get it. I it's get fine. It. It's absolutely fine. Uh, and so what this does is it directly points at the beacon. So, right now this blue line or green line, whatever you want to call it that is pointing at the beacon. So the beacon is here. So we have come down, we have turned to the outbound leg. We're now on the outbound leg and we're now perpendicular to it. We start the timer and we turn onto the new corrected heading. So there's that bearing indicator. I'd like to apologize first of all for the incorrect slides. Have I confused anyone with those incorrect slides? Okay. Not me. Good. Not Is, me. Good. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions? Please feel free to write the questions in, in the comments or say them out loud. Good. Okay. So let's talk about entering the holds the steps involved in entering a hold. We've discussed about how they look like. We've discussed about how to correct the outbound track for the wind corrections. Let's talk about entering the holds. Direct entries are super easy. Proceed to overhead the beacon, turn onto the outbound leg. End of story. No faffing around, nothing of the sort. Enter the be overhead the beacon, fly onto the outbound, do your wind, wind corrections for the outbound leg, and you're golden. So about entering the parallel. Step one, we proceed to the, the overhead of the beacon. Then we're going to fly the reverse of the inbound. So there's the beacon. There's the inbound. We basically follow, we put the tail at the top, and we align the tail with the diamond, the, da the tail of the CDI and the track diamond align on top of each other. So, for one minute, not with crosswind corrections, but because I'm a fool, but with headwind corrections. One minute outbound with the headwind corrections for the parallel entry. So, if it's a minute and we got 10 knots of headwind, then it's a minute 10. If it's a minute, but we've got three knots of a tailwind, it's 57 seconds. Then we turn left directly towards the beacon. Fly overhead the beacon once more, and we enter the, we enter the hold. So on point four, I say turn towards the hold. By that I mean we want to turn towards the inside of the hold. So in this case, for a standard right hand ho hold, the parallel entry will involve a left turn. Whereas for a non-standard left hand hold, the parallel entry will involve a right turn. Does that make sense? Okay. It does. Okay, good. <laughs> um, if it doesn't, it's, it, and the reason for this is because the hold area is the protected area. That's the area where you're sort of guaranteed clearance from terrain and from any sort of instrument procedures that you might interfere with. All right, offset. This is the this is the one w which involves a little bit of maths. Step one: proceed to overhead the beacon. 
Step two, we're going to fly the reverse of the inbound, 30 degrees offset, again, into the hold. Into the hold. So for a standard hold, it's going to be minus 30 degrees. So if this hold is inbound 180, the outbound will be 360. So what will be the offset heading null? Three, three, six, zero, three, three, zero. Perfect. I say heading, it's track. Perfect. So the track, the outbound track, exactly correct null, would be three, three, zero. We hold the outbound track. So we enter the, uh, the outbound track of three, three, zero in this particular example. But then we do one minute with crosswind corrections. Not the header tailwinds, but with the crosswind corrections. So the parallel entry, it was headwind corrections. For the offset, it's crosswind corrections. And then we turn to the inbound track away from the hold. Uh, one thing I should say also for the crosswind corrections is you might find better results if you have the time to mentally calculate half of the crosswind corrections. Why? because you're offset by 30 degrees and trigonometry is hard. <laughs> it's basically, is it sine, sine 30? I think that is um, for the math. Sine 30 is 0 0.5. Um, so that works out to, to do a pretty nice correction. If you, if you don't, if you don't have the mental capacity because you're overloaded, you're having to do a lot of things at the same time. Anyways, just apply the standard uh, correction and it'll only get you off, it'll you be off by a little bit, not much. If you've got the mental math for it, the mental capacity to, it, to do it, half of the crosswind correction. And at this point, at this point, we are in the inbound. So we turn to the inbound, fly overhead the beacon, and then turn on the outbound. You've entered the hold. Good. I'll remind you once more, questions are welcome. Right, so in terms of wind, cor so correcting for the inbound. So, but what do I mean by this? I'm going to open an Excala draw very briefly. Here we have a hold, and I'm going to draw a beautiful hold. Gorgeous right here. Uh, even a little wrong. Okay. So here's my hold. Sometimes it's acceptable to go directly to the beacon uh, in when you're inside the hold. So sometimes I can do this, right? Go directly there. But sometimes if I turn and I'm not on the right track, I need to correct, enter the inbound track, and then follow it. So the question is, when do I need to do this? When do I need to do this? And when am I okay just going directly to the beacon? So, when do we correct? We correct when we establish when we are already established in the hold. So you've done your downwind your your outbound corrections. You turn, rate one turn onto the track for the inbound track, and you see that you're a couple degrees off. The CDI isn't centered. You need to make a correction. And when you're turning inbound from the offset, the offset assumes you're going to come in on the inbound track. So you go outbound with your 30 degrees offset. You do the you do the uh, the half crosswind check or full crosswind check if you can't do the full one, the half one. And then you do your, your turn. That standard rate one turn should get you on the inbound track. But, you know, it's not perfect maths. We're not robots. We might make mistakes. We're off a little bit. Then we correct for the inbound. Okay. How do we correct for the inbound track? If you have a bearing indicator, it's great. Because you can do what's called push the head. 
which means you stick the track diamond on the outside of the bearing indicator. So turn on to a heading that places the track diamond on the outside of the bearing indicator. So for example here, we can see that we are off to the right of the inbound track. That's why you got a CDI deflection to the left. It's telling us to go to the to the left. Uh, and as you can see here, the bearing is pointing to the left, telling us we're too far to the right. If you stick the track diamond to the left of the bearing indicator, 10, maybe 20 degrees, ideally no more than 10 degrees, then that will close in closer and closer, and eventually the bearing and the CDI will line up, at which point you want the track diamond to be aligned with them, and you should have all three aligned. The track diamond the bearing indicator, and the CDI needle. And then it's the same for the reverse. If this is unclear to you, please make signal, because I'm going to uh, make a signal, because I'm going to move on. And that's the saying, push the head, pull the tail, for when you do it the other way around. But we're not doing it the other way around for now. In fact, we'll do it for the parallel, but that's fine. I'll give you a minute. Uh, yeah, okay. sorry. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so I just got lost there. Uh, in which cases do we need to subtract and add for the, um, how do you call it, the crosswind thingies, the headwind, tailwind? I got a bit lost there. That's okay. That's perfectly understandable. So. Like you were telling, uh, we need to add or subtract. You know, I just kind of got, got lost there. That's okay. So whenever you're on the outbound leg, you need to do both corrections. The headwind correction and the crosswind correction. Okay? When you're on the outbound track. Every time. Okay. Head, the headwind, tailwind, and the crosswind. When you're doing the teardrop or the offset, you need to do the crosswind check, and then if you have the energy, divided by two. Okay. Okay? Yeah, okay. So, um, we, for headwinds, we add, for, is that correct, or we subtract? So, if you've got a tailwind, so here's 60 seconds, here's five seconds. If this is a tailwind, you're going faster than you normally would. So you remove five seconds. Ah, okay, okay. If it's a headwind, you're going slower than you than you expected. So, so you, we add. yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you Wouldn't very much. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't we typically be expecting a tailwind on the on the outbound of the hold? Good question. Very good question. X. Excellent question. Uh, and the answer is no, not necessarily. I think right now, no, what you have in mind is the hold from a procedural approach. But holds can happen anywhere. Oh, word, a okay. ATC can tell you to hold anywhere. And they can just they can say, hold at this position, in which case you just do the published hold. Or they could say, okay. oh, hold at this VOR, but do it. Uh, on an inbound of 170, because I got traffic coming in from there. Okay. You know? So, yeah, good question. But, no. Also, <laughs> um, and it is a fair assumption, and even assuming that you have, say, a procedural approach here on the ground, your hold might be 3,000 feet up in the air. You got something... Um. So, I don't know if you remember studying um, uh, in meteorology for your PPL exam. No? But do you remember studying the uh, uh, how the wind changes as you climb? Uh, because there's less friction against the Earth's surface, it gets worse. Yeah, so it, get, it gets stronger, but it also, because of the Coriolis effect, changes direction. Uh, deflecting east in the northern hemisphere. Exactly. Right? It veers, right? So... Good question, Alba. No, it doesn't mean that you won't get across. That you won't get. You will always get a tailwind. Gotcha. Thank you. No worries. 
And to finish answering your, your question, Gio, the other, when it comes to the parallel entry, then in this case, we only do the head and tailwind. So, only crosswind, only headwind, headwind and tailwind. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Okay. I've been talking to you for an hour, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a demonstration. I'm gonna jump onto this Discord. I am going to copy an invite link and post it here. So, copy. Uh, so, Al, are you on a PC or on your phone at the moment? I'm on my phone at the moment. Okay, and Al, do you have Discord at all? Yes. Good. Are you comfortable using Discord for, for continuing the session? Um, well, I may have to leave because i got something going on right now calling for my attention, but I can hop on Discord real quick. No worries. If you want, join the Discord channel, and then we can send you the, the stream link at the end so you can watch what, what you've missed out. And hopefully that can help clarify some of the theory we covered today. Okay, thank you. Of course. And feel free to ask us any question. We, we don't right. bite. I think Noel, <laughs> Noel, well, Noel will testify. I'll only sometimes yell at him. <laughs> I, don't think I've, I don't think I've ever been yelled at that I'm allowed to speak about. <laughs> I hope we don't get to that part, though, because that would really freak me out. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Al, if you can join the Discord channel, that'd be great. Gee, I think you're ready in the Discord channel, aren't you? Yep, affirmative. I'm there. Good. Okay. Uh, so, until either... I'm going to be on both uh, the Discord and the uh, and the Google Meets until we have everything. Is that you, Al, on, on, on Discord? No. Z no Null's in here. I can see Null. And the Z50,000? Is that G, y'all? Okay. In any case, I'll continue streaming here until we've got three people or until our house to leave. That's fine either way. Uh, and I will de do some demonstrations for you. Okay. So first off, I am... In an airplane, I'm flying 120 knots, and I've been told to hold out a beacon. So the first thing I want to do is set up my G1000. So how do I get this? So this is the menu you'd normally get. I'm going to go to the bottom, PFD options. Again, uh, GR, you might not have this. We click on PFD options. On the left side, you got wind, and then here you got option one. Which is this one right here? I can turn it off. I can turn it off. Option one. You got option two, which is this one, which I find to be quite useless. And then option three. Option one is my favorite. Every IFR instructor loves option one. Okay, I think we've lost Al, unfortunately. Uh, so, G, is that you on Discord? Uh, yes, that's me. Okay, so no. Okay, so I'll I'll transfer this over to Discord. How about that? No problem. All right, we can, uh, if you want, you can skip the Google Meets. I'll stay in in case anyone else decides to join, which I doubt at this point, but we'll continue there. Okay. Okay, Noel, can you hear me on Discord? A firm. And Gio, I'm hoping you can hear me? Yes, Good all time. clear. Good. All right, so here we are in the aircraft. We've just selected the wind. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go back to this PFD option. So from the main PFD option, next, I want that bearing indicator. So I'm going to click bearing one. That's going to give me this one. And you can see that's nav one at the bottom left here, nav one. And it even gives me the distance and the track directly towards it, which is really useful. OK? And then if I want an addition, and I strongly recommend it, have the DME. So now you've got the DME information here to give you that distance as well. If it feels too cluttered, get rid of it. On the new G1000 aircraft, you've got that info right there. Finally, we need a timer. So we go back, we go to the main menu, 
This time we go TMR ref. And here we've got a timer. We rotate it. Oh, not there. Let's do this. Enter. Rotate it. One day if I can figure it out. It's uh, not selecting the right knob. There you go. We want the outside knob. And we go to the start. And then we can start the timer. We can stop the timer. And we can reset this timer. And this is how we should have it set up. We've got our crosswind. We've got our CDI, which we can control with the triangular knob here. And we've got our heading bug. And as you can see, if I zoom in, you can see that little diamond triangle. Good. So based on this, where is the beacon relative to me? Where is the beacon relative to me? Sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to place it. It's it's behind you and to your left. Yeah, I don't know if that's to the left or to the right. It's directly behind me. Absolutely. Yes. So the the tip of the blue arrow. That's what the bearing indicator tells us where it is relative to us, which is why it's such a powerful tool. Really, really good tool. It makes our lives so much easier. So at the top, you can see I've got GAL, Golf Oscar Whiskey. So that is the beacon that I am using. ATC has just cleared me to fly directly to the beacon and enter a standard hold. So they also asked me to make it a right turn. So I'm going to go ahead and unfreeze this flight. And I'm going to turn to the right. And I'm going to make it directly to the beacon. Keep in mind that as I turn, the bearing indicator is going to change. Because when we turn, we move. We have a turn radius. So you can see as before, it's pointing at 0, 0, 0, It's now pointing at almost 0, 2, 5. I'm going to put it as about, sorry, not 0, 2, 0, 0, 4, 0. So I'm going to put it a little bit ahead of the, of, of the bearing indicator. And I'm using the autopilot now. You can see heading AP, yaw, and out 3000. And so ATC tells me that the the hold I want to fly should be an inbound course of 230. So I'm going to use the triangular um, button to set the CDI 230. OK, so there's a 230 based off of this. What entry am I doing? No. What entry do you think I'm doing here? I, I'm honestly not sure because it. Oh wait, I, I do know this. On. Uh, just, just. Are you basically flying directly? On I'm, the you're flying outbound on the inbound path, right? So let's look at this. So I've set the course to the inbound track. Yeah. Yes. So the CDI course, like we would with yes. the VOR. Yes. The tail is at 230. Oh, it's deflecting. Sorry, I didn't see the deflect. Yeah, you, we're yeah. running parallel, right? Yeah. We're, so so what entry would it be? A, a parallel entry. Yeah, correct? exactly. Perfect. Exactly correct, right? Because we're flying towards it. So let's do that. That I mean, I can see it quite obviously. You can see it quite obviously now, now that you've pictured it. But let's do the exercise. I'm going to yeah. do, take this airplane. Put it to the bottom of the screen. The beacon's now up here. OK? It's a standard hold. So I'm going to be turning to the right like this. OK? Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the offset. So there's it is. 20, 20 degrees to the right. So it's about, that's 3, 2, 0. So 1, 2. So the offset's like this. Right? So everything on this side is going to be, is going to be, direct, right? I'm not on that yeah. side. I'm here. I'm coming inbound like this, which is the bigger yes. half of the other one. So it's going to be parallel. Exactly correct. So I'm going to unpause this. Right. Geo, what wind corrections am I going to do once I'm established on the parallel entry? 
Sorry, wind correction. Sorry? Wind correction? That's yeah, what you're saying? Which yeah. one would I do? Headwind, tailwind, headwind, tailwind, crosswind, or both? Oh, uh... For a parallel entry. You asked this question earlier. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know if I registered it correctly on my <laughs> brain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nervous laughter. Uh, That's okay, you can get both? it wrong. Both? So the only time Are you doing both? No, we're not. So the only time no, we're doing... Okay, okay. But good, it's good that you... Please, feel free... Like, if you don't know and you want to try guessing, please keep doing it. So... Yeah, that's what I'm actually doing right now. That's okay. So we, as we mentioned when we drew it on the Excala draw, for the parallel yeah. entry, we only do crosswind corrections. Now, this is quite nifty, right? Because I'm almost established parallel. Based off of this... What crosswind corrections am I going to do? Sorry, I said crosswind, a headwind correction. What headwind and tailwind corrections am I going to do once I'm overhead the beacon? Oh. Are you, are you asking no? Anyone. Oh, sorry. Anyone. Uh, oh. Yeah, no, I would let you, I, I would let you have this one. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a five knot tailwind and a six knot crosswind correct okay so that would be correct oh, if no, we did close. both yeah which that would be absolutely correct if we did both but we're only doing the headwind okay yeah? well we got a i think four I'd and a half five knot tailwind yeah so so it's a one minute standard so what would what how long am i going to be on the parallel track uh for sh it's it's freak it's going a little fast for me, but however much that is seconds m from sixty, so yeah, fifty so, three, fifty four. Yeah, so my auto whoa my autopilot keeps <laughs> disconnecting, so I'm gonna be flying this manually, which I was hoping not to do, <laughs> but there you go. And let's add some power because we are really low on speed. Seems like there's some turbulence. Okay, so we can see we're approaching. We're two and a half miles out. I'm just flying directly towards the beacon, so I'm going to put the track diamond on the outside. There you go. Pull the tail, right? So here I am. I'm getting close, two miles in. The closer we get, the less reliable the hold, the uh, the the uh, in indications are. So once I'm very close, or like under a mile, I'm just going to fly the track, wait until the bearing needle flips, indicating that we are now on the other side, and I'll start the timer. And I'm going to do that parallel entry correction. So here I am trying to keep the track diamond on the heading, on the bearing indicator. under a mile here so it's going to get very sensitive very difficult to to uh manage there it is it's disappeared instead of flipping over so i'm going to go onto the track once it appears there it is i'm going to start the timer no you said seven seconds correction of the tailwind so it's going to be yep how 53. many three fifty three five, so, five three yeah perfect so i fly the track my my track diamond is on the tail of the cdi I'm flying at approximately 120 knots. And I continue flying. I'm checking the time and I'm doing my instrument scan. A little bit bumpy, so probably not, not up to st test standards at this point. Reduce the power a little bit more because we're a little bit fast. Oh, 53 seconds and then we turn. Am I correct? Yes. Standard turn. Okay. Uh, stand, standard hold is going to be a turn to the left. Okay. So there's the 53 seconds. I turn. Rate one turn. 120 knots. 12 plus 7. So we're looking at 19 degrees. So let's just call it 20. And you can see that, that gets that magenta line on that white line, which is a rate one. Perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. from our previous IFR okay. session, isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the part I don't actually remember. <laughs> Good. So we're just maintaining that. We're scanning the instruments. 
doing our standard scan and we're going to fly until we're flying towards the beacon. So we keep turning until we point at the beacon. Correct that. And it's just a normal scan. Okay, so bring the wings level about here nice and slowly and see what we get. Okay, a little bit off, so about here. Perfect. And so now we just keep flying towards the beacon. And this time, we're going to fly to the outbound leg. No, what is the outbound leg? Uh, What's the heading? The, What's the, the heading? Yeah, the track. Uh, yeah. You're, you're looking at... 230 or 360 minus 230. Uh, <laughs> my, oh, my my brain is not working right now. Look, look, look uh, at the tail. Look, look at the tail. Oh. Uh, sorry. Uh, 050. Yeah. Right? Exactly. 050. Exactly. And it's correct. just easier to look at stuff instead of doing math. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Use your instruments, right? I found it. So now that I've got this, this relative period to come, I reset the timer, yeah? Manage our workload. There's no point resetting the timer when we're under high workload. So we're under a mile here, so we're mentally preparing. Now I'm going to use a trick to give myself a little bit of time to think on the outbound leg. So what I'm going to do is once I'm overhead the beacon, which is coming soon, so you can see it start to turn. So I'm going to turn onto the heading. And then once it flips, which it has, I'm just going to keep turning onto the outbound leg. And by waiting until the bearing arrow appears again, we give ourselves about half a mile. And that half mile gives us time to think. So, I've set the heading bug on the outbound leg. And that's important, because I'm going to put the track diamond there. I'm not going to fly the heading bug, I'm going to fly the track diamond, and I want the track diamond on the outbound leg. And by doing that, I can just count. I don't need to do that much maths with the, with the crosswinds. So the wind correction is probably going to be the same as the parallel entry. I'm expecting about seven knots for the head and tailwind, right? Because we're flying it parallel. That's the whole point. That's the whole definition of the hold. So here we are, a little bit abrupt, nice and easy. Outbound, I'm seeing three degrees, so one, two, three, seven knots of crosswind. We've passed it, we start the timer, and then we set the heading bug on, sorry, the track diamond onto the heading bug. I'm going to correct the heading, the altitude, because I'm flying well below standards. And so here I am. And I've got that timer, we said seven seconds. So it's going to be 53 again, and I've set those three degrees on the heading bug. Do you see why I wait a little bit beyond the, the beacon to, to turn? Because otherwise there's very little time to think. And yeah. that is difficult. So we're looking at 53 seconds. And so usually the first hold the first turn is always crap, right? Because of the hold entry. It's always a little bit crap. So we always give ourselves a little bit of leeway the first time around. So that was a 53 passed. I'm going to go ahead and make that turn. Don't touch anything yet. Just turn, right? Prioritize our tasks. I'm a little fast here, so I'm going to reduce the power a smidge, and I'm climbing. And looking at power... About 35% on the DA62. Now, my suspicion here is that we might end up overshooting a little because we're very fast on the turn. We're 10 knots fast. And also, we went beyond on the entry. So I suspect we're going to overshoot, and my CDI is confirming that suspicion. So we just continue turning. Don't steepen the turn. Allow us ourselves to overshoot. And we're just going to correct it. How do we correct for the inbound track? We push the head. Yeah? Push the head. 
Yeah, so I'm going to put the the heading bug on the outside of the blue bearing. About here. 10, 15 degrees. A little bit more since it's such a big overshot. It is very difficult to fly on this one, Sneezen. So there you go. The the tra the bearing is close to the to the uh, green di uh, arrow. They're starting to align. So I'm very slowly creeping my track diamond towards the center, always staying on the outside of the blue until it aligns with the green. But I'm always staying on the outside, but I'm keeping it close. Yeah. And the reason for that is we don't want huge corrections. Because huge corrections are difficult to manage. Do you have any questions at this point? And there you go, we're aligned. Uh, just curious, uh, is it easier to, to do this on an airliner or is it harder? Um, in normal operations, it's easier. Oh, because uh, it's automated? Yes. But to do it okay. manually is a bit harder because it's faster, so you got to think more. Also, 120 oh, knot okay. rule doesn't apply, so yeah. you got to think more. You actually have to use the, the, uh, the closing angles, the correct, uh, wind correction closing angles. Uh, you actually so, have to do a lot more maths. Um, so in summary, more work? Yeah, in a way. Okay. Typically, <laughs> it's more work for the pilot monitoring. <laughs> so... Oof. What I'd suggest, so what I'd like you guys to do now is make, think if you have any questions. What are you thinking about if you have any questions? Have your sims loaded. Uh, go for Echo Golf Papa Foxtrot. Uh, fly a G1000 aircraft. Um, GR, we'll see what we can do with you, mate, uh, in terms of the default G1000. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Hi. No, uh, you know the drill, I think, at this point? I do. I so I have to I have to bolt at about five thirty for a bit. Um, In ten minutes. So I, yeah. So I don't know if that's gonna be a big problem. Uh, that's all right. Um, so if if you don't have the time, what I'd say is, uh, is your sim already loaded? It's not. Okay. So it's not even running. Yeah. It's not. I mean, I could get it up and running quickly if that. Ah, if that that's right. Don't, don't don't rush it, mate. Don't rush it. Are you um, sure? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you need to, how how long are you off for? Uh, it, un unclear. Uh, I was hoping to take a break between the uh, uh, lesson and the practice. Oh, fair enough. Sorry. Um, it's okay. Yeah, go go. Yeah, go now. Do do whatever you need to do and come back and uh, whenever All you right. want. All right, Roger Wilco. Thank you so much. <laughs> no worries. Now I'll see you in a sec. Bye. Bye. Right, Gio. Let's go ahead and uh, get your screen shared. Yeah, okay, hang on. Just a bit. Just. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, share your screen. Okay, I, can you see my screen? I shared it. Let's see. Yes, I can. All right, so I see you in the Baron. Yeah. Good. And you've got that add on to give you a little bit more stuff, right? Yeah, normally. Good. So. Oh, by the way, I'm using Steam Edition because P3D is. I don't want to have uh, FPS drops during practice, so I have better performance in Steam Edition currently. So yeah, that's why I'm using it. Okay, no, that's fine. Uh, I don't. You know, that's not an issue at all. So. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, take off. And then turn on the heading of 230. Make it a left turn. And set oh, 3,000 feet. Sorry, how do I turn the heading here? So the heading's on the left side. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so just click on it. That'll center yeah. the heading, which is fine. We can leave it as it is. Let's set the yeah, altitude okay. to 3,000 feet. Alt to on. bottom left. Okay. Set it to 3,000. 3, yeah. yeah, okay, got it. Good. So go ahead and take off. All right, here we go. Ooh, full power there. Yeah. 
I do need to fly at a heading of 120, uh, speed of 120 knots. Yeah, so let's climb first, so then you can set the speed. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. That's all right. Yeah, get the gear up. Good. So you will have a Cap 140 autopilot on the bottom right. Bottom right? Sorry? It's okay. Um, the fact, yeah, so... Okay, so turn the heading bug until it's mm -hmm. on 230. Okay, 230, oh, hang on. But let's make it two, two, 270 is fine, 270 is fine. Okay, 270, I got it. Yeah, so let's turn to the left, heading 270. Good. Okay. Not bad. Nice. Uh, please take in, please take into uh, take into consideration I'm using keyboard, so no joysticks. Yeah, of course. You know, another handicap for me. No worries. So, so much for so much for being a low cost sim simmer. <laughs> let's have a look at the. Uh, so if you zoom out your view a little bit. Hang on. And then look down a bit. Okay. Uh, you don't have an autopilot. Actually, I do have. Like, at least when I disengage the autopilot, there would be that sound. Yeah, I just don't know where where the autopilot panel is. Okay. Yeah, I don't know either. I, as you know, I'm flying Airbus planes, so I'm not really familiar with GA ones. Okay, hang uh, on. So Two, do do seven. shift shift four. Sorry. Shift there? four. Yeah, try yeah. No, try shift two instead. So close that one. Yeah, okay. there there it is. That's the autopilot panel. Mm -hmm. Good. So go ahead and press uh, AP. Okay. Heading HDG. Mm hmm. Good. And then let's set uh, V. So see where it says VS zero. Press the up button yeah. a few times. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So down down a few times back to three thousand. Yeah. Good. And Sorry. then, yeah, and then out. There you go. Oops. Well, I Good. think I can. Yeah, I, I can like manage it here. Yes, you can. Just very Good. Up. So let's yeah. let's zoom into the PFD. Okay. Good. Okay. So now the autopilot is going to get you up to three thousand feet. Okay. Just gonna show you my frame rate just in case. <laughs> yeah, no worries. All right, good oh, stuff. Okay. Let's start bringing the power back a little bit. About fi I say like fifty percent, a little bit less than that. Yeah. Uh, let's just leave it as it is for now. That's good enough. Okay. Let's see what let's see okay. what the airspeed does. Okay. Let's bring it back just a little bit. The power, just a little bit. Okay, that's too much. A little bit back up again. Uh, which RPM do you want me to use? Well, RPM's not going to help you here. What you need is inches. So the, you see the top right, you got 20.4 on both sides? Yeah. Try yeah. like 21, for example. Okay. Got it. Okay, let's try... There we go. Let's try, let's see. Uh, let's try 21.5. Okay, that's More? slowly. Yeah, let's leave it for now. Let's wait until the airspeed okay. is established. It's it's now increasing a bit. So let's go ahead and uh, and let's set up the the course indicator for two three zero. Whoa, so okay. that's okay. It's just some turbulence. So yeah, on the right side of your yeah. PFD, in the middle, you'll see mm -hmm. a CRS barrow. Do you see that? So uh, yeah, CRS barrow. This one. Yeah. Yeah. So let's rotate the CRS. Okay. Yeah. Which... So yeah, there you go. Do you see the CRS, which is course? 
You see that says yes. 330, and you can see the CDI, the course yeah. direction indicator, that's moving. Let's set that to 230 degrees. Yeah, so the, the hold we're going to do today is 230. Okay, hang on. Uh, we've got some minor turbulence there. 230. Got it. Yeah. You know what might help for you, uh, you? If you do right click on the screen. Yeah. And then where it says cockpit. Mm -hmm. Then go. Uh, no, that's not it. Um, okay, go. So press Alt. So let go of that one. Close, close that. Yeah. Alt. Go to views. Mm -hmm. And then view mode. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, let's look at cockpit. And then do cockpit. Nice. And then that's perfect. So now now you're it's ugly, but it's really yeah, good for yeah. instrument training. Okay. Right. It's really good for instrument training. Okay. So you've set the course at two three zero. The airplane let's try twenty one point six. I think that might get you to about one hundred and twenty knots roughly. It's close enough where we are now. I added more power. Yeah, that's fine. I'll get you rough. We're close to 120. Okay, so now ATC tells you mm -hmm. that they want you to to they want you to hold a Golf Oscar whiskey. Now you look at your chart and the frequency is 115.4. So, do you see the top left? You've got nav one. Yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah so let's let's rotate those the standby and let's change it to 115.4. That's the frequency for Glasgow. Okay, hang on. A 115.4. Yeah. Oh, hang on. How do? don't. Okay. 115.4. Okay. Okay. Got so it. So then let's put it on the active because that's on standby. Okay, okay, so you can see yeah, it's G been yeah. you see it's been identified. Golf, yeah, golf Oscar whiskey, got it. Yeah, good. So, ATC clears you for a left turn directly to the beacon. Now this is where it's going to be tricky, because mm -hmm. you don't have. What do you not have? You don't have a bearing indicator. So here's what we're going to do. Yeah. We're gonna, we're going to cheat. Uh, if you. If you go on the nav button mm -hmm. and click it. Sorry, uh, this one? No, no, not. Oh. So, so disengage that. On the on the yeah. nav selector, go in the middle where there's no plus or minus, but there's a button. Yeah. But there's, there's a pointer. So you need it there to be a pointer itself. So look, click there. Okay. So how are you going to change it? Uh, oh, there it okay, is. Got it. Click, click on that. There you go. Yeah. So now you can change nav two. So go ahead and put one one five decimal four on that one as well. One one five decimal. Okay. Okay. And now then switch the frequency. So now you got it on both. Yeah. Okay. Good. So yeah. let's. You see the button CDI at the bottom. Yes. Let's click on that once. So now you got nav two. Mm -hmm. So, rotate it until the CDI is centered. Uh, is, is it the course adjust yeah, button? Yeah, it is. Or? It is, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It's the CDI for so, nav two. Yeah, but for the opposite direction. So which... Keep turning. Which keep degree? Turning. So until the CDI is centered. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that you can fly towards it. So... It's moving Is it away. Right? Zero nine or zero? So look look at the deflection bar on the left side. You want that to be this aligned one? yes, you want that to be aligned with the other one. Yeah, so just a couple of degrees at a time. Perfect. Okay. Good. So now let's there. Yeah, so let's turn the heading bug to the left and put it on the top of the CDI. Other left. Oops. Oh, Other sorry. left. <laughs> Whoops. That's okay. Keep turning it. Keep turning it. We've got to turn it all the way around. Yeah, we've been clear to the hold. So we're making our way towards the hold. Okay, yeah. so... Okay. There you go. Nice one. Now we're going to make our lives a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. 
and we're going to change the way you do it a little bit. So turn the heading bug about another th three or four degrees to the left. Nice. And just about now, I want you on the autopilot panel to press nav. So now okay. it's going to so now what's going to happen is that the autopilot is going to fly it by itself. Oh. So it's so it's going to fly the the inbound by it. It's going to fly directly to Gao by itself, which is really helpful. Yeah. So in the yeah, meantime, yeah. let's put the heading bug on 230. Heading bug to 230. We're going to use it to do that exercise with the that we did earlier on, yeah? Okay. So yeah. now it's at two three zero. Yeah, good. So the the autopilot is flying inbound. It's gonna fly directly towards the beacon. Okay. And so remember how we set the CDI to the hold before? Uh In, when I, I was demonstrating when I was demonstrating? Yeah, yeah, I think I Yeah, so so this it's time somewhere in my head. <laughs> okay. So so okay. this this time that that CDI is going to be your heading bug because you have nothing else. So we have to work with what we have. So, okay. so if the inbound, if the arrows at the bottom here on the heading bug, what kind of entry would you be doing here? So imagine the hold, right hand hold. So I have to pull the airplane down. Yeah. Am I right? That's it. And then beacon the, the beacon yeah. is yeah in the middle. Yeah. Uh, and then it's a right hand turn. A parallel one. So you, sorry. A parallel one, am I right? Yeah, parallel is correct. Yeah. Good so, <laughs> yeah. So, so parallel is correct. So, we're expecting a parallel entry, right? So you know what to expect okay. roughly. You don't have the wind corrections, unfortunately. So we're. Yeah, it's not here. Yeah. So this is why you needed the Coronado G1000. Yeah, but I, I wasn't able to purchase it one time. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. We work with what we've got. So It's a bit of a challenge for you as well. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. So now yeah. that you know, now that you've determined the hole, let's put the heading back to the top. Yeah? We can just click it, by the way, in the future. Oh, okay. So, oh. So at the bottom, okay. yeah, so, yeah, there you go, like that. So then that will center it on your current heading. So now the autopilot is flying towards the beacon. And we know that the out, the inbound is 230 and the outbound will be 050. So let's set the heading bug on 050. Okay, I'm trying to Okay. Yeah. So now we know that when when we fly overhead the beacon, we're going to turn onto a heading of zero five zero. We're going to set the heading when we fly overhead the beacon. We're going to set the heading on the autopilot uh, to give us a heading of zero five zero. Does that make sense? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I need yeah. to like <laughs> I need to see this so I I get it. So visualize in your head. You got the beacon. You're flying in the opposite direction to fly outbound parallel to the outbound leg it's a standard hold standard holds are right turn holds so with a parallel entry once you're at the end of the parallel outbound what direction will you turn towards the beacon sorry can you please repeat i was what after after you finish your outbound on the parallel which direction are you going to turn to go directly towards the beacon mm. So I'm right, maybe. Okay. Let's. Uh, why don't you pause the okay. sim for a second? Okay. Okay. So. It's paused. Okay. That's all right. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Yes, and... please. <laughs> I I guess you need, really need to send me all of these documentations because I have to review everything. The thing yeah. is, uh, uh, I don't know if I told you, but I've never taken any PPL classes, anything aviation related. So the yeah. thing is I'm learning broken pieces. So like 
That's I fine. feel like I'm the underdog, you know. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I'm You're learning part... broken puzzle pieces. That's perfect. scattered on the floor. <laughs> yeah. That's... That's perfectly fine. Can you see this? Hang on. He... No. Wait. There, there. I can see it, yes. Okay. This is a standard hold, yeah? Okay. With the right turns. Agreed? Okay, yeah. Yeah? So. With, with this one, right now, what we have is that the hole that you're about to enter is like this, 230, yeah? This okay. is the hole you're about to enter. 230, agreed? Three, zero. Yeah? Yes. Where are you now? In your simulator, where are you now? So let's peek onto your sim. Look at, look at the, where are you relative to the beacon here? Uh, just in front of it. Yeah, so... Okay. Looking at this, where are you? So, here's the airplane. Where do I place it? Uh, in front of me, so we should be somewhere, like, just on the edge of the green arrow you drew there. Like this? Yeah, somewhere there, maybe. Okay, let's have a look. So... What heading are you at now? Uh, zero nine six. Okay, let's draw an airplane. So let's say this is the nose of the airplane. Okay. Here's its wing. Here's another wing. And here's a tail. Okay. Okay. So it's the heading is zero nine six. Nine six. So where am I pointing? Here, here, here. What's the heading zero nine six? Uh, north east. So here's north. Here's east. Yeah. Here's south. Here's west. west. So that's zero. Oh, north. That's one eighty. Yeah, one eighty. That's ninety. Yeah. So oh, southeast. Okay. So what's so southeast? So zero nine six. So zero nine six. Yeah, Southeast Zero, point. Yeah. 096 is east. Yeah. It's nine degrees. Yeah. So it's about like this. Okay. Now let's look at your. Now you are pointing directly at the beacon. Yeah? Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to extend your nose. Right? Okay. This is where you are. Okay. This is your position. This is why we're doing the parallel entry, right? So let's look at let's look at how it works. So how do we draw? So I'm going to move you aside for a second. In fact, let's leave you here. Uh, so the parallel entries. So how do we determine the entry sectors? So we draw the lines, yeah? So we've got that line here. Then you've got the perpendicular line, which we offset by 20 degrees. Remember, we're talking about 20 degrees. So that's perpendicular. Yeah. Right turn, we offset to the right 20 degrees. So it's going to look like this. Okay. So then what are the entry sectors? So we have direct. Remember that? Yeah. Direct. So if your airplane was anywhere in here, you do a direct entry. So you just fly directly to the beacon and you enter. A teardrop pattern? Yeah, so where's the teardrop? Here or yeah. here? This one or this one for the teardrop? That one. This one here? Oh, hang on, hang on. Sorry? Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm trying to visualize it. The bottom or the top for the teardrop? So the top so this would be the parallel entry. So it's this so the, the, right? the teardrop is on the top bottom. part. Yeah. So no, teardrop is the bottom. Oh okay. Oh, on the bottom part. Okay. Yeah. So these are the three okay. sectors. Yeah. So this is what we've been drawing up until. Ah, okay. 
So parallel, okay, okay, parallel direct and teardrop. So this is why we're doing a parallel entry. Okay. So these are the three okay. sectors. So let's try it again. Uh, here is your aircraft. Mm -hmm. You are pointing at 096. 096 is something like this. You are pointing directly at the yeah. beacon, right? And yeah. And you're at zero and you're you're pointing at 096 directly at the beacon. Those are the three the two things, right? So, based yeah. off of this, you are in the parallel sector. So, you're doing a parallel entry because you're in the parallel sector. Okay. Is that clear so far? Yeah, okay. So, the thing is, I need... Okay, I, I should have a paper with me, which in which case I don't. I'm so, trying to, like, visualize it mentally. So, yeah, that's giving so, me a hard time. So this, is why okay. we, so, this is why we use this technique... To visualize it, yeah. So let's see how yeah, this I only looks. understood the part. Sorry. So, sorry. Let's yeah, let's let, let's use our HSI, which is mm -hmm. this instrument right here at the bottom. Yes. Let's use that to determine where we are. Now we're going to use it using your setup. We're going to do it using your setup because you don't have a bearing indicator, so we can't actually see it. So. We're going to be in this situation here, okay? Yeah, parallel, okay. So I'm going to turn this to black. We've got this here. So here's your HSI. We've got, I'm going to copy this here. We have where we are, a little airplane in the middle. Yeah? Yeah. So right now, because of your setup, we're doing this. We're going directly towards the beacon, yeah? With me so yeah. far? Yes, yes. Good. So we're flying directly towards the beacon. We've set the heading bug onto the inbound. So this is 096. So far, 096. And then here, you've set the heading onto 230. Why? Because the inbound track, this right here, this direction is two, three, zero degrees. Three, zero. Are you with me so far? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Please continue. Yeah, good. So you want to determine from this information, you want to determine which of these sectors we're in. We know we're in the parallel because we've done this now. But in the airplane, you're looking mm -hmm. at this and you need to determine it. So I'm going to say the following. Okay. Mentally, I'm bringing this airplane down here. Yes. Mentally, I'm going to imagine that the beacon is at the center. Is at the center. Good. Yeah. I understood until that part, and then I got lost. <laughs> okay. Now we need to draw the hold. Okay? Okay. It's a standard hold. Standard holds are right and turns. turns. Yes. So okay. let's draw that. So inbound that direction. So we're going to go like this. And then when we're over the beacon, we turn to the right. So in our mind, we draw the holds. With me so far? Okay, okay. So that's really good, right? But now we need to know, well, is this a parallel? Is this a direct or is this an offset? Yeah, because we can't really determine with so, the... <laughs> yeah. So, so remember that... Uh, let's do this, right? Uh, even that. So remember that... This here, this is the axis of the hold, right? If we draw a line perpendicular, like that, perpendicular means at 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And then we offset it by 20 degrees. Remember from the drawing here? 
we offset it by 20 degrees for the different sectors. Does that oh, make so, sense? So it's, all, it's, it's always 20 degrees regardless of the sector? Yes, yeah, so this is always 20 degrees from the perpendicular of the inbound axis. And why is it 20 degrees? Sorry, just curious, why is it always I have, 20? I have zero ideas. I don't oh, know. So, it, it, so it's like that? Yeah. It's so, all, yeah, okay. So, so now the question is, well, do I offset it 20 degrees the, to the right or to the left? To the left. Right, so with the, ar with the arrow pointing into the hold, it's always 20 degrees to the right for standard holds and to the left for non-standards. And it's easy to remember, right turn, offset right, left turn, offset left. Offset left. So, I'm gonna so 20 degrees to the right. Yeah, so I'm going to do that 20 degrees to the right. So now I have my sectors, right? So I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten this to here because those are the sectors on the side of the okay. inbound. Sorry? Is that confusing? Yes, yes, please continue. Okay. No, no, it's okay. Please continue. I will so, let you know if I get lost. Okay, okay. So we know that this is direct. They're yeah, direct. The bigger and... of the two is parallel. And the oh, smallest sector is, is offset. Offset or teardrop yeah, in teardrop. the US. Yes. Okay, so the biggest one is the direct. Biggest and... one is the direct. Okay, okay. Let's solve this. Uh, okay, sorry. Good. So, this is how we determine it, right? And if you look yeah. at this, if I take this, I'll 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 take this, and I'll take this. I'm going to group it. I'm going to make it bigger. And now I'm going to rotate it so that, so that your airplane points to 090. Ready? Yeah. Look at that. It looks basically identical, yeah? A little bit off because we didn't do the oh, angles perfectly. Yeah. Yes, yes, but okay. it's something like that. Yeah, because because what we've done is we have used our in oh, we have used <laughs> our instruments to recreate this. Yeah, and that is the hard part for me. Like I don't yeah. really know how to determine things. So, so this is what we've done. So looking at yours, uh, here you are. Looking at yours, you are pointed at, you're on a track of approximately 0, 0.96. It's around 0, 0.95. Yeah, 0, yeah, nine five, the okay. diamond. There's yeah? just a little offset. Yeah. Yeah. 0, 0.95 ish. Right? Yeah. So let's do the exercise. 0, 0.95. The, 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 so the heading bug, you said 0, 0.50. That is 0, seven. So, so right now it's at zero five zero because of the parallel track. Uh, if you unpause the sim for a second and then set it to two three zero. Okay, hang on. And then pause it again as soon as you have. Good. There. So. Let's go. Oh, you've minimized oh. your app. <laughs> That's right. Sorry, sorry. Can you there see what I'm? Can you, can you see what I'm seeing? Or yes, are you, yes. Are you on one one screen? Yeah, I am on one screen. But you can see what so, I'm saying. Yep. Okay, good. So, the hold is inbound the heading bug. It's a standard hold. So, I'm going to turn to the right. Yeah? So, it looks okay. like this. Yeah? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Please yeah, continue. So, so this, is, this is what I'm seeing in my mind. This is you. I've I've put the hold on top of the center. Okay, boom like okay, that. Okay, so that heading bug uh, whoa. determines. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> what is going? So yeah. that heading bug determines one part of the pattern. Yes. So when I was teaching it, I taught it to you and and the others. I taught it using the CDI. Because that's what you would use in the real airplane. Because in the real airplane, and in in uh, in the realistic 
a G1000s, you have the bearing indicator. Which is the blue line? The blue line. The bearing yeah, indicator okay. tells me where where the, the beacon is relative to me. So look, as I turn, so I'm going to make a bit of a drastic turn. Look what happens. Uh, so yeah, it, it changes. Because it's pointing at the beacon. If I put a map, uh, layout, inset map, the beacon is there. So if I yeah. zoom in, the beacon is here. Uh, look, yeah, and it's yeah. pointing at, there it is, right here, yeah. Gao. Yeah, at your nine o'clock. So it's always pointing at the beacon. So if I turn to the, the right, beacon. yeah. It changes. So look what happens. Okay. It points at that beacon. Beacon's going behind me, so it is going behind me, right? So this is the tool yeah. that, that we use that you don't have, unfortunately, because you don't have the uh, realistic G1, uh, G1000. So yeah. what we, so this is how you, this is what you use to fly directly to the beacon, right? But you don't have that. So what we have done instead is we have you using the CDI to fly towards it. So tr like flying it more traditionally, having it centered, right? The arrow at the top. Yeah, the line at the middle the and line the at line the at the end. Exactly, and you flying towards it. That is the, it's like the, it's like, um, it's the equivalent of having the bearing indicator appearing just when you're in the right place. Hmm. Right. So right now, the bearing indicator would be the same position as the as the green arrow here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Now, just the the hard part for me is like, uh, I know we uh, through the heading indicator which part of the holding pattern, but I don't know like if it's a direct or a, an offset yeah. or yeah, <laughs> that's okay. the hard part for me. Yeah, of course. And this is where practice comes in. So what I recommend for practice is that every time you you fly directly towards the beacon, set the heading indicator to the inbound, and freeze the sim. Because you've got a flight simulator, you can do that. You can use the tools at your disposal. So here, let's do that drawing. We've got the right turn. So yeah. in our minds, because we need to do this in our minds. It's great to do it on paper, but we need to practice doing it in our, our minds. Our minds. So, so we're turning it like this, okay? So the the perpendicular is like this. So 20 degrees to the right if the if the hole's to the left, so we're going to be like that. That's the sector. So everything above that is going to be direct. And then this is going to be the smaller one. So this area here, so from the heading bug there to that 20 degrees offset, all this is going to be parallel, and everything in this area is going to be offset. So based off of that, we are in the parallel sector sorry just to ask what are those four white circles yeah so let's let's uh, unfreeze the sim and let's check it out um okay, okay. unfreeze the sim click on the heading bug to center it hang on okay there. now select the heading mode in your in your sim so d uh, don't pause it so just select the heading mode uh, i just turned off the sound <laughs> Oh, right. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. Let me stop. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. So heading mode on the autopilot. Okay. Okay. Now let's turn the heading to the left. So let's turn the aircraft to the left. Let's see what happens. So that's fine. That's good enough. See how the the circles remain perpendicular yeah. to the center and yeah, look at that. Yeah. Do you see how the lines get getting away? Yeah. These are the CDI deflection points. So they indicate mm. the number of degrees you're deflected from from the selected course, in which case you selected 095 roughly. Okay. So here you're seeing bigger and bigger deflection. So let's go ahead and turn to the right about heading 150. Oh, turbulence there. Yeah. So as I move, the green thing is still in place. Yeah. 
Let make it less than one five zero. Let's make it one three zero. Okay. That's one five zero is a lot. Now look at it. Now the greens come in closer because your your distance from the from the selected course is going to become smaller and smaller. So you see the green bit is slowly going to start coming in, and you can see slowly creeping towards the center. Yeah, the middle one. Yeah, okay. There it is. Now that you can put the heading bug on the on the heading course. In fact, just put nav on again, on the autopilot. Okay, good. Yeah, and remove heading mode. Uh, it's not doing it. So press he so pr cycle nav. There it is. There it is. It's doing itself. FSX autopilot does what it want to do. You can just leave it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we but we can use that to mentally imagine that on the on the CDI for for when you've got the other G1000. But you can't unfortunately for now. That's fine. Just a little bit of extra mental gymnastics. Yeah. Good. All right. So let's pause the sim again. So you have determined which which entry it is, yeah? It's a parallel entry. The parallel entry is as follows. You fly the opposite direction, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, orange. You fly the opposite direction. So the same as the outbound course, right? So if this is two, three, zero inbound, Outbound, it's going to be zero five zero. Yeah, two thirty minus one eighty. You... Ah, so okay, so it's minus one eighty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or if you don't want to do maths, two thirty. The opposite is zero five zero. I prefer doing maths on that one. <laughs> so that's simple problems. Yeah. So it's always minus one eighty. Okay. But it will be much easier in the aircraft when you have the CDI because. Let's look at this. Uh, sorry. Look, you've got, so in that case, you got the zero, like the 100 set there. And let me check on. Yeah, okay. so you got 100 set there, and the tail, 280. So that's Hang what on, it is. Let me check. So, look, the, so 100 and 280. 2.550, 280. Oh, okay. Yeah. 100 plus Yeah, okay, what need? One hundred yeah, plus one eighty is two eighty. So you can just look at the tail, because the opposite yeah. direction, right? That's all it is. So we're looking. So it's at the always plus one eighty. I have to remember that. Well, the outbound and the inbound, right? Yeah. Op direct right. opposite direction. You turn one eighty degrees. That's what it is. <laughs> so, for the parallel entry, the first thing we do is we go outbound. In the opposite direction of the inbound but on the same course, right? So it's like you're doing it yeah. the reverse. The reverse. That's why you call okay. it a parallel, because you're flying parallel to it, but in the opposite direction, right? And yeah. for the wind corrections, we only do crosswind corrections so that we remain in here. Okay? And we do crosswind mm -hmm. corrections, and then the time is one minute. One minute. Yeah? After we do that, we turn into the hold. We don't turn in this direction. We turn in this direction, into the hold. This is the hold. We want to turn into it. Why? Because we want to stay safe, right? This is the safe area. This is the unsafe area. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So we turn into the hold, directly to the beacon. Now. Then that's the offset. No, so that like no, when that, you this this is still direct. Oh, okay, okay. This is this is the single entry, right? You fly parallel. You do your one minute. You got your crosswind correction, and then you turn into the hold turn. towards the beacon. And now. when you turn, that is that is the offset. Like when you turn. Nope, it's still the parallel entry. Oh, no. Still the parallel. It's okay. Still the parallel entry. We're just doing. Ah, parallel. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I mixed it with the yeah. yeah sectors. Okay, sorry. Yeah, My bad. no worries. <laughs> no worries. 
So you're you're going towards the beacon. So for you, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do more maths. Because with the other ones, you just put the bearing towards it. But you don't have that. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to calculate. You're going to say, okay, well, normally that's 230. But I have to be 30 degrees off. So that's going to be 230. To the left, that's going to be 200. So now this is going to be 200 degrees. Yeah? Okay. So that you fly. And if you've done the crosswind corre correction correctly, what you'll see is that the CDI, the so if you got this, and then let's make it a bit thicker, and you've got this, and then you've got the CDI here, right? So think about yeah. it. You're too far to the le to the right, so the CDI is going to be to the left. Yeah. So while you're flying yeah. towards 200, this is going to be like that, and as you get closer, it's going to come in and come in and come in, and then if you do it perfectly, it's going to center just as it disappears, because you're going to be over it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Assuming the oh, cross. Slowly, it's getting to me. <laughs> yeah. So. So this is this is this is the additional difficulty. If you want to quote unquote cheat, it's not really cheating. It's just a different way of doing it. What you can do is do 235, 230 minus 45. So instead of minus 30, you do minus 45. And so that will bring you somewhere like this, like down here, right? So a, a bit steeper turn. Yeah, so a steeper turn. And the idea is that you then intercept and then fly to the beacon. The beacon. So intercept the pattern and then fly directly to the beacon? Yeah, so the second option is you turn a little bit steeper and then you come in. Yeah, like and then. That. Okay. That's the other option. And that's what we're going to do since I don't have the. Yeah, I have missing parts. Yeah, so you can do that. Okay. So. Okay. One thing we've done. First thing we've done, we're flying inbound. Second thing we've done, we've determined our position relative to the hold. Third thing we did is we determined which entry sector we're in. Yeah. So then the final step is figuring out how to fly the parallel. So we did one, we fly on the opposite direction. Zero, five, zero. Plus crosswind corrections. So zero five zero track plus crosswind corrections. Okay. So if the wind's coming here, you're gonna be flying a little bit more like that. If the wind's coming from there, you're gonna be flying a little bit more like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then after one minute, you turn. So we decided we're gonna do the forty five. So you're gonna do this one. So if the inbound is two thirty. What's 45 degrees to the left of 230? Uh, so 230 minus 45, since yeah. it's to the left? Yeah. Okay, so it's around 1... Hang on. 185? Yeah. So you need to, if you want to do the maths, you need to do it in your head. Yeah, um, yeah that's what I did. <laughs> good. Otherwise, you say, okay, well, look at these. 12, 15... 180, 21, they're all 30 degrees. So you do one and a half. So you go okay. 230, so 230 is here. So one and mm -hmm. a half, so it's going to be, so I go to the closest one, which is 24. 24. And so we're going to be left, so one and a half, and then 10 degrees behind it, which is going to be 185. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. So you got you got these different little little tricks you can use, right? So you so now you you fly inbound one eighty five. You fly the inbound, fly overhead, and then you turn outbound. So we determined to fly directly. 
we looked at how we were relative to the hold. We determined which entry pattern we would need. We figured out which heading, which track we would need to fly with the crosswind corrections. And then we know that we need to make a left turn and then offset by 45 degrees. We fly overhead the in, uh, we fly inbound, fly overhead the, th uh, the beacon, and then we turn out to the outbound oh. track. Good. Ooh. Yeah, that's a lot of information. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, holds are challenging. That's a lot of, yeah, yeah. The, be the, the best, I'm... yeah. Sorry? Sorry? What were you going to say, sorry? Yeah, um, the thing is, like, I thought, like, to, uh, in comparison with my friends, I thought my aviation knowledge was superior. That's not the case. <laughs> Turns out I have to learn so much more. Now I feel like I'm lagging behind everyone. Like, every, nah. every friend of mine who is a, uh, an aviation expert or something. So, aviation so no geek like me. Noel has <laughs> been doing lessons with me. Right, so Noel has been studying. Like I've been teaching him the syllabus, and oh, I think Noel's saying that he can't make it. That's fine. Oh, it's sad. Um, Noel has been doing lessons with me, and uh, so so like I've been training him, so he has a bit more of a preparation for this. Oh, I see. A little bit. A well, little bit. So, so no, so much. I mean, this is a bit. Uh, challenging for me since I've never stepped into aviation, proper aviation territory just yet. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. This is why we're doing these sessions, yeah? To to introduce the world of real world flying to flight yeah, centers. This... <laughs> That's the... That's like... This is like a big change for me. Gosh. Yeah, that's, right. that's so much information. Now I understood, but, you know, I mean, everything's just juggled in my head. I mean, I get, okay. I get everything, like the three sectors, just the hard part is determining which uh, sector it, it is. Yes, it's it's definitely the hardest thing. Determining... Yeah, like which which is it? Is it the teardrop? Oh, sorry, is it the offset, the parallel, or the direct? It's definitely the hardest doing this. Yeah, like I can I can hardest. picture it out. Yeah, I mean I can picture out the race car, the race track pattern, but like I don't know which side is this and that, like which part do I so, offset and everything. So so. To be, first off, this is IFR, right? This is IFR flying training. Um, so this is advanced skills, right? Ooh. Before, before you'd get to this, you would have about a hundred and seventy hours of real world flight time. In which case, I don't. Not yet. <laughs> you would have. Thank you, thank you, you thank you, have, COVID, for shutting the door. <laughs> you would have your PPL. You would have, what? you ha would have done about ten hours in the simulator doing instrument flying with an instructor. You would have several hours flying in the real aircraft doing IFR flying with an instructor before you start doing the holds. So we are. This is a seminar specifically about holds, but in your real world training, you would normally. This would be further down the line. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We were just focusing on one section. We are just section. So I'm yeah. like leaping. I'm doing a giant leap of faith. <laughs> no, that's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to end the session now. Uh, yeah. Just because okay. I'm I'm actually moving homes and I need to get up really early tomorrow. So my question is, do you have any feedback for the seminar? Um, so far, I mean, everything, well, in my perspective, since like I always get lost in everything, I mean, for the others, I can see that they understand. Mm -hmm. So it seems, well, it seems to me that your teaching methods are do so this as well, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's just oh. that for me, I'm struggling to keep up since, you know, I have no knowledge of PPL theories and everything. Okay, so but, it was a, bit, uh, a little yeah, bit. A little bit too advanced, then. Yeah, for, for me, because well, That's considering fine. the fact that I, I don't have knowledge, and as I said, we are I'm doing a bit of a leap of faith. So, yeah, like I, 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 for me to understand, I needed you to like demonstrate it for me through uh, figures and procedures step by step, just so I can like, just so it can help me picture out what's going on. But yeah. Um, during the part where you just you're just speaking and showing the graphs, I I was actually lost. But 
That's okay. You that's, know, that's yeah. just, this is it, this is useful feedback for me. Yeah, I mean, it's for me. It's uh, it's I, I I can't complain because I have no knowledge. It's uh, you know I'm attacking this sector without uh, knowledge of other things. As you said, I sh by now I should have. Uh, I mean, before learning these holds, I should have a lot of uh, flight hours and I know like basic theories and everything. But since that I'm learning these holds without any knowledge at all, mm -hmm. it's uh, it it takes a it takes work. Yeah, absolutely. That's perfect. This is great for me. This is me. This is uh, feedback that I need. So this is fantastic. <laughs> so um, perfect. So basically, you know, you know what the the deal is with me, right? This is yeah. my business. Um, so this is the website uh, with the training. We've got the testimonials, including Noel, who's in here. Um, oh, <laughs> so uh, just, oh, competitive just... gamer, gosh. Yeah. Respects to him. So that's how we met. So then, yeah. So, so anyways, you got the website. You can you can look at pricing and all that. That's, but that that you know you know the deal. I'd say obviously don't don't because I know your situation. Don't yeah. do this. Don't do this, right? Uh, not because uh, I don't think it wouldn't help you. I think it would, but because financially, it's not the right decision for you. But yeah, I mean, if you if I you know if speak. if you know anyone else who would who has flight sim and who wants to learn from an instructor, you know, and they got they've got the money, the means to do it comfortably without it putting them in a difficult situation. I'd love for you to spread the word. Sure. <laughs> Well, that would be that would be a cake walk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but uh, but yeah, no, um, that's really useful feedback. I'll continue to do these seminars for free. You know how it is, G. At this point, you know what what my, my what my mo is. Sem these seminars will always be free, and you're always welcome, even if you don't end up buying the product. Um, so thank you thank you for joining i'm gonna call no sir thank I... you <laughs> <laughs> no, thank gonna... you for making it 